Welcome to Tales from Nerd. I'm your host, Fan of Nerd 2016 slash Kevin. And of course, this is the weekly podcast where I talk about the comics coming to you this Wednesday, March 16th of 2021. No, well, March 17th, technically, because Marvel and independent com- comic companies come out on the 17th. DC releases their comics on Tuesday, which is the 16th. Gives you an extra day to be like, to go to the comic shop and be like, oh, Either I want to pick up just DC, Tuesday's your day. If you want to pick up DC independent titles and Marvel, go on Wednesday. But yes, favorite book of the week, Maniac of New York, number two. I forgot who wrote it, but it's right there. It's I love it because the first issue was like, okay, it's set up for the, you know who the villain is, you know who the main two characters will be, and who is like the secondary, like, and uh, secondary, like, villain. It's like the city, but people don't believe of the killer of the the main bad guy. And I'm like, yes, by Aftershock Comics, issue one and issue two are out in comic shops. I recommend. It's my favorite book of the week. And of course, we'll see what this guy says. Jerry can for the win. win. Alright, cool. So yes. That's me. Of course, let's go to the first book of the week, which is by DC Comics, Batman versus Rachel Ghoul, number five, written. By Neil Adams. Art and cover art also by Neil Adams. The price of the book is $3.99. And this is the description of the book. At last, a miniseries by legendary comics talent Neil Adams is back. Everyone knows that Gotham City needs Batman. But a shadowy group is running and running a competition to replace him. Will they choose a man with the necessary, necessary skills to keep the people of Gotham safe? Or do they have something else in mind? Either way, Dead Man has his own idea of the next steps to take. I do not recommend this book at all. It's drawn cool, it's drawn, and the, art, the cover art is good, but the issue is Neil Adams doesn't know how to write a story. Because I found I was watching a other YouTube's uh, YouTubers uh, video about Neil Adams. He did Batman Odyssey. If, if I I think I got that right, and you could tell that he he draws. This is what he says: He draws the books, and then he creates the stories. And I could tell that very easily after reading issue four, which I'm like, what's going on? The art's cool. It's it, it feels like it's an '80s book, a night like maybe late. In, early 90s, like, beginning 80s, but, like, the story doesn't, <laughs> there's no story, it's just, like, cool art pages. Uh, I don't recommend it, but if you want to pick it up, I, it's, it's better for a trade, I'll say that. There's one more issue, so I've already, I've already read most of it, so I had to reread it, funny enough, because I forgot about this book, and the book came out, it's, it's been delayed for about a year. Uh, when the when the world happened of the bad stuff, of you know everything is closed. Yeah, this yeah this book was just put to the side. Now it's like everything's kind of going back to normal ish, and now they're bringing that book back to finish it. It's only two more issues. Well, one more issue after this one. I'm rambling. Do not pick it up. It's not a recommend. Uh, next up, we got a comic by Aftershock Comics, B Quest Number One, written by. Tim Seeley of also cover art. Art by Freddie Williams the third. The price of the book is $4.99, and this is the description of the book. Welcome to the high fantasy world of Tangia, a land where wizards and warriors battle, dragons in dark dungeons, where thieves pillage ancient ruins and priests answer the audible words of their great gods. Welcome to Chicago, Illinois, where the magical items from Tangia are being traded on the black market and are messing everything up. Now, a group of Tangia adventurers must go undercover in our modern world to stop artifacts and monsters from falling into the wrong hands. But how will they fare in a world without wizards and warriors? From Team Seely, from Dark Red and Brilliant Trash, and Freddie Williams II... Oh, I said the third, sorry, second. From He-Man, Thundercats, Batman, Slash Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, comes to Bequest, a real-world fantasy tale. Now, I'm picking this up because Tim Seeley, I like his 
uh, stories, storytelling. So to see him do something with Chicago Dungeons and Dragons, I've started really liking independent comics. So when I saw him on a title, I'm like, I'm picking it up. I recommend it. It's it's a it's a number one and aftershock comics, of course, is my favorite book of the week. So that company is doing something good. So I'm glad I'm knowing more about them and they're putting up really good work. This and Scout's Honor, like, oh my god. But uh, we're gonna move on. To a Marvel book, we got Captain Marvel number 27, written by Kelly Thompson, art by David Lopez, letter by Clayton Coles, cover art by Marco Cicchetto, and the price of the book is $3.99, and this is the description of the book. Mistakes were made. Swipe right, Captain Marvel. Carol Danvers is back, or is she? Devastated by her breakup with Rhodey, Carol can't seem to get in back into her groove. Sure, monsters are still getting punched, but things are also getting missed. And oh boy, oh boy, is she grouchy. Before she can drive them fully insane, Carol's friends stage an intervention that looks a hell lot, a hell lot of a lot like speed dating. With friends like these, who needs enemies? Um, is this a good jumping off point? Yes, because after the events of the last issue, she went to the future and she came back and seeing the future, the possibilities of like, what if this kid, is, what if this person is never born because of this action, which caused Rhodey and her to break up? I think they'll get back together again. I mean, it's comics. I think they work well, very well. Uh, but yeah, if you're down for Captain Marvel, there you go. Pick it up. Kelly Thompson is actually really writing uh, part of my favorite run of Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel books in a while. So there we go. Next up, we got a DC combo. We got Catwoman number 29, written by Ram V, art by Fernando Blanco, and colors by Jordi Belair, and cover art by Jolie Jones. The price of the book is $3.99, and this is the description of the book. So far, Selena Kyle's ambitions, ambitious plan to gain control of Alley Town has been going perfectly, but she's about to run headlong into a brand new foe and pass right through them. Riddle us this, Catwoman. What do the Candy Mob and non-corporeal assassin and poison, heavy, poison Ivy have in common? And when it comes to solving riddles, there's only one person Selena can go to, no matter how much she hates the idea. So, uh, Catwoman by Rambi. It's a new jumping on point. You can pick it up. Uh, of course, if you want a good jumping on point, for DC Comics, Infinite Frontier is like the perfect jumping on point. It tells you like where everyone's at. Unfortunately, they didn't give one for Catwoman. They didn't give you no sort for Catwoman. But uh, if you like Catwoman, which I like, Jolie Jones did a good job. Ram V is doing a good job. Pick it up. It's a fun book. Catwoman is a now mobster running her own like crime thing. So it, it's it's a fun book, and uh, she's she gets challenged uh, quite a bit. But perfect jumping on point. Next up, we got a Marvel comic. We got Champions number five, written by Eve L. Ewing, art by Bob Quinn, colors by Federico Bleep, letter by Clayton uh, Coles, designers by Carlos Lau, and cover art by Tony Infanti. Infanti? The price of the book is $3.99, and this is the description of the book. Outlawed Part 5. The champions are done running. The time to stand up and fight is here. But can they win what an entire government is allied against them? Aligned against them. And if they can't, where do the Marvel Universe's next generation next generation of heroes go from here? So, uh yeah, this is the finale for this what is this called again? Outlawed, yeah, outlawed. So yeah, it's finally for, for Outlawed, the event that was supposed to happen, but never did. Uh, yeah. E Evaluing, love her work. Uh, fortunately, she, this is her last issue. Next issue is a new, I think, creative team. I think new artist and new writer as well. So, uh, a pick up the trade. Give L Eve L, L Ewing some love. She did Ironheart. Uh, she's doing this, so, you know what, L uh, Eve Ewing, thank you for bringing champions back. I congratulate you for some, writing something uh, very fun. So, thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to the next book. We got a independent title. We got Ahoy Comics. Happy Hour number 5. Written by Peter Milligan. Art and cover art 
by Michael Montan Montanant. The price of the book is $3.99, and this is a description of the book. Having fled the US's, USA's regiment of brutally enforced bullets, Kim and Jerry are prisoners of the revolution pro-misery cell they sought to join. The first step to acceptance, survive a swarm of joy suckers, razor tattoo vermin, specific bread to sniff out happiness, plus the usual Ahoy illustrated prose uh, features. So happy hour is basically what if America was always happy and if you're you know not happy you get sent into this asylum that makes you that makes you happy and in another country they do the opposite instead of making you happy they make you miserable and these two characters Kim and Jerry are just like we don't know what to feel we don't want to do this we don't want to alert this but you see them go through this like going to different towns always trying to be happy, just tr try to avoid If they become too happy, they forget we can't be happy because we want to be human. Because they just went through traumatic events. Uh, I won't spoil it for you, but uh, Happy Hour 1-5 through five is always on comic book shops. Uh, will this ever get a trade? That is a very good question. But if it doesn't get a trade, I recommend it. It's a very weird. Weirdly illustrated, too. It, it feels like mad, but in comic form. Uh, well, the cover feels like a mad like a mad magazine so yeah i recommend it though uh pick up issue one through five when you're at the comic book shop next up we got a a marvel comic we got iron fist heart of the dragon number three written by larry hama artist by david watcher colors by niraj minon letter by travis landham designer anthony gambino colors cover art by belly 10 the price of the book is Three ninety nine, and this is a description of the book. The war of the hev heavenly cities come to Wakanda. Gambo manifests over Wakanda, and within, with it, an army of the undead. Other cities filled with hordes of undead and mortal villains appear all over the world. Can Iron Fist stop the worldwide calamity? Will he discover who is behind this deadly scourge? Uh, yes, we are in the middle of the story arc, so this is only five issues. Uh, it's it's an okay Iron Iron Fist book. I'm just happy to get Iron Fist, because uh, we don't have a Luke Cage book. We don't have a Jessica Jones book, so to have something from... Something I like from, you know, Bendis, which was his Defenders run uh, a couple years ago. Just to see Iron Fist back, I'm just happy to have him back in a book, even though it's a miniseries. So, uh, either you want to pick it up now or wait for trade. There you go. Next up, we got Iron Man by Marvel Comics. We got Iron Man number seven, written by Christopher Cantwell. Art and colors by Kafu. Cover art by the legendary artist Alex Ross. And the price of the book is $3.99. And this is a description of the book. Overclock, Iron Man and his and his small band of allies go in their cellar as they pursue Korvac to the farthest reaches of the galaxy. Even as the villainous android intellect tries to telepathically lure Hellcat and Tony toward his bizarre utopian visions. But after an unexpected left turn leaves Iron Man on a remote and uncharted planet, Korvac might take the opportunity to blow Shellhead's vulnerable friends out of the stars once and for all. So, Christopher Cantwell, uh, I'm starting to enjoy his Iron Man book more and more. If you want a good jumping off point, read issue 6. All you need to know is, Korvac's a bad guy, Tony must defeat him, because if he doesn't, he's going to destroy the world. And uh, it's Iron Man doing the Avengers level things without, you know, calling the Avengers. So, issue 6 is your jumping off point. Next up, we got... A DC comic, we got Justice League number 59, written by Brian Michael Bendis, Ram V, art by Zerma Nico, art also done by David Marquez, who does the cover art, and the colors by Tamara Bon Villain. The price of the book is three, no, $4.99, and this is a description of the book. Justice League slash Justice League Dark. Writer Brian Michael Bendis reunites artist David Marquez from Miles Morales, Iron Man, Batman slash Superman for a new star-studded Justice League featuring 
Superman, Batman, The Flash, Hawkgirl, Aquaman, Hippolyta, and, well, new DC powerhouse, Naomi, and is that Black Adam? Superman is leading the charge to reinvent the Justice League, and at the same time, a new cosmic powered threat arrives from Naomi's home world to rule the Earth. And in this backup story, dark days lie ahead for the new Justice League Dark. Zatanna and John Constant take a road trip, only to discover horror around the bend as a friend and sometimes foe is reborn in fire. A legend is destroyed and another takes a terrible turn as Merlin reveals the beginning of a new blood drenched plot for all humankind. So begins writer Rand B's new journey into the abyss with the Justice League Dark and artist Zermanico. So, I'm excited for Rand B's uh, stuff for Justice League Dark. Brian Michael Bendis. We'll see. He put Green Arrow in this book. I need a Green Arrow book. I like Green Arrow. Green Arrow is my favorite human character in the DC Universe. Because uh, he likes to speak his mind. But yes, uh, I'm, I'm excited for the book. I like the premise. Uh, we'll see how Bendis handles it. Let's, I know the first six issues are going to be probably be like good. And then from then on, we'll see. But if you want to pick up Justice League book, there you go. It's all there. And, of course, it's a good jumping on point because uh, it's after Death Metal. So, there we go. We got another book. We got Marvel King of Black Spider-Man number one. Written by Jed McKay. Art by Mi M Michelle Bandi Michael Michelle Bandini. Cover art by Carlos Gomez. The price of the book is $4.99. And this is a description of the book. All webbed up with no place to go. So it's King and Black tie-in. That's all you need to know. Uh, I, I'll, I'll pick it up because Spider-Man and Jed McKay has been writing some cool stuff. So I'm down. Next up, we got a DC comic. We got Nightwing number 78 written by Tom Taylor. And art and cover arts by Bruno Redondo. Colors by Adriana Lu Adriano Lucas and letter by Wes Abbott. The price of the book is $3.99. This is the description of the book. Leaping into the Light, Part 1. Nightwing is back and his drive to keep Bloodhaven safe has never been stronger, but his adopted city has elected a new mayor with the last name Zuko. When Nightwing and his Batgirls help in investigating the politician bearing the same name as the man who murdered his parents, she unearths details that will shock and fundamentally change the hero. The New York Times uh, bestselling team writer Tom Taylor from DC's and Injustice and artist Bruno Redondo from Injustice and Suicide Squad are about to take Nightwing to the next stage of his evolution as a hero. So if you like Nightwing, if you like Dick Grayson, uh, he's back. No more Rick Grayson. So to see, you know, Nightwing back in the blue, back, going back to normal, and I'm I'm sad to see what Dan Jurgens wrote. Yeah, Dan Jurgens. Uh, he had a fun run, but uh, Tom Taylor, who better to write Nightwing after Dan Jurgens had to deal with so much crap from uh, Tom King? Oh man. Yeah, but uh, good to see Nightwing back, so I'm happy. Good jumping on point as well. Uh, next up, we got by Bo we got a comic by Boom Studios. We got Origins number five, written by Clay McLeod Chapman, art and cover art by Jakub Rebelka. The price of the book is three ninety nine, and this is a description of the book. After reaching his long buried workshop, David. Chloe and his robot followers must make one final stand to protect their future, but the network has a secret weapon and will stop at nothing from achieving their ultimate goal of destroying all organic life. So Origins is set in far, far future, and our protagonist, David, is the savior for this human world. He's the last human, and he has a lot on his plate, but the secret with David is... It's not his first life on, you know, Earth. So, with that premise, this book is only six issues. Of course, we're on issue five. Next issue is the finale. Uh, if you want, pick it up. If not, you know, just wait for trade. If not, 
you know, wait for it on sale. But it is a really interesting book. The art's cool. And to see something else that's not hero or, you know, villain, cool. Because, one, we don't know who the bad guy is. We've never met the bad guy. We just know David has been going through some stuff. Uh, but, yeah, I, I like Origins. Next up, we got Image Comics. We got Radiant Black number two. <laughs> oh. 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 That, oh. I was going to sneeze and that just came out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Radiant Black number two, written by Kyle Higgins, art and cover art by Marcelo Costa. Uh, the price is three ninety nine, and this is the description of the book. Better off red. Yesterday, Nathan found an alien artifact that turned him into a superhero. Today, his dad says he has to get a job, so driving for a rideshare company driver it is. Oh, there's also someone else out there robbing banks with powers like him. That's probably important. So, Radiant Black, we got. A superhero, uh, which is just a guy who, who's, you know, he's in debt. He's just trying to make ends meet. He has to go back to his old town. He meets up a buddy, and stuff happens. I'm I'm just giving you, like, the first five pages or ten pages. Uh, but you need to read the book. Of course, I like the issue. Kyle Higgins has written Power Rangers in the past. And to see him tackle a hero but in, in his own, like, world and ideas... Totally down. Kyle Higgins. Uh, pick up Raiden Black number one and two when you're at the comic shop uh, Wednesday. Next up, we got a Marvel comic. We got Sword number four, written by Al Ewing, the head of X himself, Jonathan Hickman, art and colors by Valerio Shiti, and also colors and cover art by Marte Gracia, designer by Tom Mueller, and letter by Ariana Maher. Oh, that's a mouthful. And the price of the book is $3.99. And, of course, this is a description of the book. Krakoa, we have a problem. The mutants are dying. Their island is dying. Earth itself is dying. All hope for humanity as a species lies in Protocol 5. Protocol 5 isn't going to work. Uh, we still don't know what Protocol... Well, from the way the characters talk uh, about Protocol 5, it's very dangerous. But I like this. Uh, I just wish we got more of Sword before King of Black happened. Mind you, I think this book was supposed to come out much, much more earlier, but they think, well, was it? No. It came out after Empire, but Empire was supposed to happen this summer. I don't know. It's it's a lot. But, yes. Uh, it's space, you know, X-Men in Space uh, by Al Ewing. So, of course, if you don't know who Al Ewing is, he wrote Ultimate and uh, The Royals, which not many people read. I read it, but I liked it. Because uh, I was trying to get into Inhumans, and there's no Inhumans book, and uh, hopefully uh, there isn't an Inhumans book for a while. But uh, yes, uh, I recommend issue one. Uh, well, I, I recommend after the, the Cam Black stuff, because uh, it does help people. Because if people don't want to read Cam Black, they're reading something with X-Men, and if they just want to read X-Men, they don't have to read this. Uh, let me see when this is all over. So issue five is just the, you know... Is, is a good jumping on point. It's after King of Black. So, if you don't want to read this, read issue 5. That's a proper jumping on point. Next up, we got a DC comic. We got Superman Red and Blue number 1, written by Margaret Bennett, John Ridley, Dan Waters, Brandon Easton, and Wes Craig. Art by Wes Craig, Jill Thompson, Clayton Henry, Steve Lieber, Danny, and cover art by... Gary Frank. The price of the book is $5.99, and this is the description of the book. This new series presents a presents fresh new visions, visions of the man and seal in two in his two signature colors of red and blue. Around the world, everyone knows what knows that when they see a red and blue streak in the sky, it's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superman! To start things off, Academy Award winner, winning writer of DC Future State, the next Batman, John Ridley Jones artist, Clayton Henry from Batman Star Superman, to tell a story of Clark Kent, as he confronts a villain who still haunts, <coughs> uh, again, sneeze, who still haunts him in a story that shows what Superman can mean to a whole country. Then Brandon Neeson from DC Future States, Mr. Miracle, and Steve Lieber, Lieber from Superman 
Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen takes take readers to the streets of Metropolis to show how one hero can mean so much to, a, to an individual in pain. Plus, writer slash artist Wes Craig from Deadly Class tells a tale of Superman's early days and the man who inspired him to become the hero he is today. And Margaret Bennett from uh, DC Future State, Carol Zorrell, Super, Superwoman, and art artist Jill Thompson give us a tale of teenage Clark Kent, while Dan Waters and Danny, the team behind Coffinbaum, bring us an outlandish fable about what happens when all colors are stolen. So, I, I'm excited because uh, I like what they do with the Batman black and white. Now they're doing Superman red and blue. I like that uh, that Wolverine book is uh, what? Red and black, something like that. And they're doing that also with Carnage. So, it's a lot of books that are doing, you know, just two color tones. But they're done so well, and they're just mini books. So, if you like this interpretation, they might write something. I'll pick it up because I like Superman and uh, Phil Kennedy Johnson Superman was hey, he did the first good issue as a new writer, but um, I'm interested. I'm interested in this because uh, also yeah, when you think of Superman, all you think is the red and blue, and uh, I'm so excited for it. And also the Gary Frank cover is awesome. Also the the Lee Bermejo cover is pretty awesome, but I like the Gary Frank one a little bit more. But uh, it's a good jumping on point. Also, you don't need to read. You know, if you just want to read it, just pick it up. They're, they're short stories. So these are not essential. But if you like Superman, this might be a book for you. Next up, we got Thor number... Well, by Marvel Comics, we got Thor number 13. Written by Donny Cates. Art by Nick Klein. Cover art and colors by... Matt Wilson and designer and letter by Joe Sabino and cover art by Oliver Coipel. The price of the book is $3.99 and this is the description of the book. Prey Part 5. Eventual Donald Blake. Thor's ancient axe. Jar Jarnborn. And the world tree. Not a good combination. With Thor still nowhere to be found, Blake is about to finish what he started. The end of Asgard. Meanwhile, Valkyrie manages to track down the long-absent Odin, but he is not the same Allfather he once was. Can Odin, can Odin rise to the occasion and help his son, help save his son and Asgard? And who will help Lady Sif and the others in the dimen in Dimension Blood? Surprises abound as the gods face the fight of their eternal lives in the penultimate chapter of Prey. So, if you want to skip this, uh, issue 15 is a good jumping on point. But pray having an evil Donald Blake come back. Because one, Marvel has not used Donald Blake in a very long time. To see Donald Blake come back and as a villain. And he beat up so many people. Mind you, Donna Cates is writing this. So, if Donna Cates is writing it, it's pretty good. Uh, so... And it also teases something from Donny Kitts who wrote in Thanos Wins. So, there's a little Easter egg right there if you read Thanos Wins by Donny Kitts. So, there we go. Uh, next up, we got uh, some from IDW uh, Publishing. We got Transformers slash Back to Future number three, written by Kevon Scott, penciler and, penciler and cover art by Juan Samu. And we. Oh, no color. No? Okay. Um, yeah, the price is $3.99, and this is the description of the book. Where and when are Money McFly and his pal, the Autobot Gigawatt? That's what Biff Tandon wants to know, because if he can find him, he can help his bosses, the Decepticons, find what's left of the Resistance and pound him into next week. And if Biff can't find him, well, he'd better prepare to be on the receiving end of a, of a Decepticon whooping. Um, yeah, uh, this book was delayed a couple weeks ago. They put this book as being released last week, and I put it out there, um, the, two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, and, uh, sorry, yeah, Giga and this were just, are just being delayed. Don't know what's going on, it might be just with the publishers, uh, but yeah, uh, if you want to jump in on point, I mean, it's only one more issue, so if you want get it. If not, you know, trade 
trade weight. So there you go. Uh, I like the book, but it's been too long. So, yep. Next up, we got another DC Comics. We got Truth and Justice number two, written by Brandon Easton, art by Janoy Lindsay, and cover art by Carrie Curry, Curry Randolph. And the price of the book is $4.99. And this is the description of the book. As DC's new anthology series continues, prisoners around Metropolis are waking up in their old homes, unaware of how they got there and being accused of escaping from Strikers Island. Superman will need to use all his super all his powers and his journalistic skills if he's going to save the prisoners and get them properly exonerated. So, Truth and Justice is just an anthology series, so each issue will deal with characters just doing what they do as superheroes or just regular humans. I know the next one is John Constantine. I don't know who the other one is. And of course, you don't need, you don't need to read issue one. It's just one and done. There you go. One and done. And next up, our final book of the week. We got Marvel Comics. We got X-Force number 18, written by Benjamin Percy, the head of X himself, Jonathan Hickman. Art by Gary Brown, colors by Guru EFX, letter by Joe Caramagna, designer by Corey Patek and Tom Mueller, and cover art by Dean White and Joshua Kassara. The price of the book is $3.99, and this is the description of the book. Welcome to their nightmares. Quint Acquire returns to Krakoa to find a nightmare creature wrecking havoc on X-Force. But what deadly secrets are X-Force hiding and who's trying to unearth them? So, yeah. Uh, good jumping off point was issue 17. Uh, Quint Acquire, he got a new suit and he doesn't remember all his memories after being resurrected each time. That's a teaser for you. That's the podcast of the week. Please let me know in the in the comments down below what books you're excited for. Uh, I'm excited for a lot of them. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be a good week, so I can't wait. And uh, the next few episodes will be pre or the next two episodes will pre be pre recorded. Uh, I'm going on a trip. Uh, don't worry, it's not like I'm going on a trip, but it's for family stuff. So uh, you're going to see some uploads for TCG. You're going to see still this show. I like putting up the show, so don't worry. It'll be going on. Uh, the book of the week, well, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to put the picture there. It's not going to be there because, you know, I won't have time to read all the books. I have a plan how I'm going to read the books, but uh, yeah. Uh, please, everyone, be well, and uh, of course, take care and have a wonderful day. Peace.